In the year 1927, the Maine Central Railroad hauled two million passengers. By the end of 1960, the Maine Central would have exited the passenger business completely. So what caused 1960 to be the year that everything changed for passenger rail in the state of Maine? This map from a 1974 Maine Department of Transportation report on passenger rail shows what passenger routes were in service in 1960. The first railroad to end passenger service in Maine in 1960, the Belfast and Moosehead Lake Railroad. In this picture, we find the Belfast and Moosehead Lake Railroad on the right-hand side and the Maine Central on the left. The Belfast and Moosehead Lake train has stopped at the shared station at Burnham Junction. February 5, 1960 saw the last run of the Belfast and Moosehead Lakes rail post office car. Six weeks later, on March 10th, they would end passenger service, making scenes like this disappear forever. The next railroad to end passenger service in the state of Maine was the Maine Central. If you take a look at the map to my left, you'll find the Maine Central's tracks highlighted in yellow. You'll note that this is a critical portion of the state of Maine's railroad infrastructure for passenger service if for no other reason than it provided a northern-southern link between the northern part of the state and the southern part of the state. The Maine Central ended passenger operations in September of 1960. With the Maine Central gone, the state of Maine's passenger rail options looked like this. Note the large hole where the main central used to be. Although the Bangor and Aroostook continued passenger service through 1960, it was on September 4th, 1961, when the last Bangor and Aroostook passenger train ran from Caribou, Maine to Northern Maine Junction. And then there were three. This map showing 1964 passenger routes in service in Maine from that same Maine Department of Transportation report mentioned earlier shows the Canadian Pacific Line running east to west through the central part of the state and the Boston and Maine Railroad into Portland and the Grand Trunk from Portland through Bethel and out into New Hampshire. The Boston and Maine Railroad was the next to go. Although the Boston and Maine continued to run trains into Portland, Maine into the 1950s, by the time the rail diesel car was invented, the Boston and Maine was quite happy to adopt it. This particular picture, taken of North Station in Boston in 1964, shows two Boston and Maine bud cars about to depart. These bud cars, so nicknamed because they were produced by the Bud Company, were the only passenger service on the Boston and Maine into Portland by the time service was allowed to end on January 4th, 1965. As you can see from this map of passenger routes still in service in 1966, the Grand Trunk out of Portland towards New Hampshire and then on into Vermont and Canada and the Canadian Pacific from east to west through the state were the only routes active. Although technically an active passenger route, the Grand Trunk had reduced its service to excursion trains through the year of 1966, as demonstrated by this photograph on Portland's Back Cove Bridge. The steam train in question is headed out of Portland on an excursion run. This service would be discontinued at the end of 1966. And then... There was one. Oddly enough, it was a Canadian railroad, the Canadian Pacific, that survived the 1960s with its passenger service. The Canadian Pacific handed its passenger train operations over to Via Rail in 1979. Via Rail would continue the train, now known as the Atlantic, until November 16th of 1981. From November of 1981 until May 1st of 1985, there was no passenger rail in the state of Maine. The Atlantic would be re-established in May of 1985, and it would run from then until December 16th of 
1994, when passenger rail would finally vanish from the state of Maine. So we've been around the state, and we haven't really answered the question, what caused passenger rail in the state of Maine to disappear in the 1960s? For the answer, we need to go a little bit further back in time. In a word, the automobile. So isn't blaming the death of the passenger train on the automobile a bit cliché? Isn't that obvious that as people bought cars, they would go away from the train? Personally, I like the Model T Ford. It's fun to drive, it's fun to start, they're easy to maintain, and I hope to own one one day. But in reality, with 15 million of them produced and marketed by Ford to people from all walks of life, it had a strong appeal to those that were in rural areas that didn't have reliable public transportation. As a result, the Model T Ford is, well, at least partially responsible for the death of the passenger train. The interstate highway system put a huge dent in passenger rail traffic after World War II. These numbers are nothing less than staggering. In a five-year period, the Boston and Maine was hauling less than half the people it had been five years earlier. The Maine Central was down by almost two-thirds in ten years, and the Bangor and Aroostook was off by almost 71% from what it had been nine years earlier. With numbers like that, it's not surprising that the Maine Central and the Bangor and Aroostook went to the Public Utilities Commission in 1959 requesting permission to abandon all passenger service. The Public Utilities Commission came back with a ruling that both railroads had to retain service for at least one more year. The Maine Central, however, appealed to the Maine State Supreme Court, and they received permission to abandon all passenger service in 1960. The State of Maine Supreme Court ruling in favor of the Maine Central Railroad to abandon passenger service really was what started the domino effect leaving the state without passenger rail in the 1960s. Today, most of the trains you'll find in Maine that haul passengers are tourist or heritage operations. Like this one, the Belfast and Moosehead Lake Railroad, where I volunteer. You'll find dedicated volunteers who wish to preserve Maine's railroad history, vintage locomotives, and vintage equipment, still hauling trains and moving people. But it isn't all just antique equipment and volunteers. The Downeaster. The Downeaster is operated by Amtrak, but is a venture of the Northern New England Passenger Rail Authority. The first Downeaster train operated on December 15, 2001, more than 35 years after the last Boston and Maine passenger service left Portland. Multiple trips per day are operated between Boston, Portland, and since November 1, 2012, Brunswick. The track between Portland and Brunswick last saw passenger service under the Maine Central. According to the Downeaster 2019 Performance Report, ridership records for the 2019 fiscal year were broken in 7 out of the 12 months, revenue records broken in 9 of the 12 months, and revenue from ticket sales in total broke all previous records. Based upon that, you would have to agree that the Downeaster is a success. With over a half million passengers per year for the last two years, it's safe to say that passenger rail in Maine is back. Although consistently showing ridership and revenue increases, the Downeaster does not actually make money. According to the 2018 financial report, the Downeaster cost $22.3 million to operate but ticket sales were only $11.6 million. The difference is made up by grants primarily from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the state of Maine. On the face of it, that sounds bad. A little less than half of the operating costs of the line are being subsidized. However, a Center for Neighborhood Technology study in 2008 
predicts that the Downeaster's influence will lead to $55 million of new tax revenue for the state of Maine each year by the year 2030. If this proves to be true, the Downeaster will be a great economic force in the state of Maine. Maine is back on the rails.